This is what we're going to see today, how to calculate the volume of solids of revolution. So what are solids of revolution? So these are solids that are obtained by rotating a region in the xy plane about an axis, and we're going to focus on either horizontal or vertical axis. So our goal is to calculate the volume of solids of revolution. So how can we do that? Well, it turns out that we can use integration. And the strategy is the same as for all other applications of integration. So what we'll do is just slice the volume into uh, thin slices, calculate the volume of a typical slice, and then sum over all slices, which really means just integrate over the whole solid. Okay, so let's work through a typical example. Suppose that you want to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by the curves y equals to x squared and y equals to square root of x about the x-axis. So the first thing you want to do is sketch the region and figure out what the solid of evolution will look like. So here I'm interested in the region bounded by two curves. The first curve is y equals to x squared. So this is a curve that looks like this. While the second curve is going to be y equals square root of x. So it will look like this. And the region I'm interested in is the region bounded by the two curves. So this is the region I'm shading in red here. And also, I will indicate on my graph uh, the axis of rotation. So this is the x-axis. So I'm rotating about this axis here. All right, so what does the solid of evolution look like? Well, you think, if you think about it, you're taking this region and rotating it about the axis. So you'll you end up with some sort of, sort of solid that will look like this. So you're rotating the whole thing like this. So you basically have some sort of weird solid with a kind of hole in the middle. All right, we can also, if you want to have a better picture of what's going on, you could ask Wolfram Alpha, for example, to sketch the volume, the solid for you. So if I say rotate y equals x squared, y equals square root of x about the x-axis, then I think that Wolfram Alpha should understand what I mean. Let's see. It tells me a whole bunch of things. And particularly, it tells me that the volume here is 3 pi over 10. So remember that. We'll try to calculate that in a second. But it also gives me a sketch of what the volume looks like. So this is close to what I said. The, the green axis here is the axis of rotation. The blue curve is y equals x squared. The purple curve is y equals the square root of x. This is my region. I'm rotating, so I get some sort of weird solid with a big hole in the middle. OK, so our goal is to calculate the volume of this solid of revolution. OK, so let's go back to the region that I'm rotating about the x-axis. So how do, I, how do I calculate the volume of the solid of revolution? So what I'll do is slice it into slices of very small but equal width, calculate the volume of a typical slice, and then sum over all slices. But how do I get these slices? So I'm going to start by slicing the region itself into rectangles of small but equal width that I will call dx. And then what I'll do is rotate each of these rectangles to get a typical slice for the solid of revolution. So if I rotate that particular rectangle here, what will I get? So I'll get something that looks like this. Well, that's only half of what I get. So more precisely, let me draw the slice here. What I'll get is something like this. Right? And this is my typical slice for the solid of revolution. Now, that's, that looks like a washer, so we call this method the disk washer method for calculating volumes of solid of revolution. So in the next lecture, we'll see a different method, which involves slicing into cylindrical shells. OK, so let's stick with the washer method. So what I want to do now is calculate the volume of a typical slice. So this is what I will call dv. So what is the volume of this slice that I have here? Well, first, I know that the width here is equal to dx. So the volume here will be given by the area of the slice times the width, which is dx. The area here is the area of the surface here of my typical slice. OK, so I need to calculate what this area is. 
But this is uh, basically a washer, right? So it's a, a big disk with a hole in the middle that is removed. So to calculate the area, I'll first calculate the area of the big disk itself. So let me call this radius here R outer. And then I'll remove the area of the hole in the middle. So let me call the radius here R inner. So with this notation, I know that the area will be given by pi R outer square minus pi r inner square. So I'm taking the area of the big disk and removing the area of the hole. And I still multiply by dx. All right, so that gives me the volume of a typical slice. And then I'll want to sum over these slices. But to be able to do, th do that, I need to express r auto and r inner in terms of my variable x. So I'll go back to my picture and then identify here what r auto and r inner are. So if I think about it, the height here is what I called r inner, while, let me change color, this distance here is what I called r outer. So now you can see what these are in terms of the functions. Just looking at the graph, we'll see that r outer is actually the value, the y value of the function y equals square root of x. So in other words, this is y equals square root of x square, and our inner will be the y value of the function y equals x square. So I'll get x square square dx. So in other words, I can simplify, I'll get pi times x minus pi times x to the fourth power dx. And that gives me the volume of a typical slice. Okay, so the next step is to sum over all slices. And remember that summing over slices means integrating dv. So to calculate the volume of the solid of revolution, I want to calculate the integral of the expression for dv that I just found. But I need to find what the limits of integrations are. So what I want to do here, so my variable is x, so I want to integrate from the left most point of my solid. So this point has coordinates 0, 0 to the right end point of my solid, so I need to find the coordinates of that point. But this is the point of intersection between the two curves, so I need to find the coordinates of the point of intersection. So if the two curves intersect, they have the same y coordinates, I end up with the equation x squared is equal to square root of x. Then I can square both sides of this equation, I get x to the fourth power is equal to x, and the solutions of this equation are x equals to zero, and x is equal to one. So in other words, this point here will have x coordinate 1, and then you can calculate easily that the y coordinate is also 1. So that tells me that I need to integrate in the x coordinate from x equals to 0 to x equals to 1. Okay, so all I have to do now is substitute my expression for dv. So this was pi x minus pi x to the fourth power dx. Then I can certainly evaluate this integral. I get pi times x squared over 2 minus x to the fifth power over 5 between 0 and 1. I evaluate. I get pi times 1 half minus 1 over 5. So if I put everything on the common denominator here, I'll get 5 over 10 minus 2 over 10, which will give me 3 pi over 10, which is indeed the answer that Wolfram Alpha gave us. Awesome. So let me end this video by summarizing what we just did. So how can we calculate the volume of a solid of revolution using the disk washer method? So the idea is to slice the solid of revolution into little disks or washers, and then you calculate the volume of a typical slice, and then sum over slices. Now the volume of a typical washer will always be given by the volume of the big disk minus the volume of the small hole in the middle, so pi times r outer square minus r inner square. Now, if it is a, a disk instead of a washer, then it just happens that r inner square is zero, but it's the same formula in general. Now, that's what you're, you're going to get if you rotate about a horizontal line, because the width will be given by what we call dx, and in that case, you need to rewrite everything in terms of x. If you rotate about a vertical line, then you'll be slicing with horizontal slices, so the uh, height of the slice will be the dy, and then you'll have to rewrite the r outer and r inner as functions of y. But once you've done that, then you can calculate the volume of the solid of revolution by summing over slices, which means integrating. So you need to figure out the limits of integration 
evaluate the integral either, either in terms of x if you're rotating about a horizontal axis or in terms of y if you're rotating about a vertical axis and you get the volume of the solid of revolution. Awesome.